New video just in tonight. The bodies of the six people killed this morning at 10th NK being removed from the scene by the coroner. But the investigation is far from over. And so we have team coverage tonight, starting with ABC 10's Van to lie from the scene with more on the victims. And Van, it is just a nightmare for so many families. A living nightmare. As a brawl broke out, bad turned into worse. Gunfire erupting on K Street around 2 a.m. just as the area's nightclubs began to close, sending hundreds running for their lives. More than 50 evidence markers indicating shell casings on the street. 12 people injured, 6 people killed, among them 38-year-old Sergio Harris, the first victim now confirmed by the county coroner. My son has a wife, he has children, all that and all that's gone because somebody wanted to pull out a gun and just spray everybody up that's coming out the club, that's not right. The father of three close friends with Stefan Clark, who was shot and killed by police in 2018. He was love and light, he was energy, he was life at a party. Clark's brother, Stevante Clark, now an advocate to end gun violence and police brutality. He says enough is enough. You cannot fight against the police injustices when you're still fighting within your own communities. Stefante says society is becoming more desensitized to gun violence. Tonight, families are left heartbroken as events continued downtown. <laughs> Hundreds crowded the Golden One Center for the Kings Warriors game, a moment of silence held. Now back here live, you can see it is still a very active crime scene. Police tape still up here and it's still uh, there's still no estimate on when these roads will reopen. And I want to pan the camera this way, if we will. Um, some friends here making a memorial. They have brought balloons. They have set out candles and are writing notes to the victims of this mass shooting. And as I was mentioning off the top, as those uh, bodies were being uh, carried away, driven away by the coroner's office, there were family members there who wished not to be filmed. But every time a van had driven by, they've been left in the dark. They didn't know if it was their loved one inside that van. So each time an emotional breakdown where they gathered with each other, families in arms, supporting each other. So really still so many more details left to be uh, uncovered. So far, the coroner's office has released one name officially. We have learned of several more uh, through family members, and we will continue to update you through this newscast and in the days ahead. Chris. Mm -hmm. Our van to starting off our live team coverage tonight. Van, thank you. Today, family members on scene also identified Devazier Turner as one of the victims. You see him here. He was a 29-year-old father living in Vacaville, but he was from Sacramento. Shooting victims that could be transported to hospitals were taken to different, several different locations. This is video from Dignity Health today. A new tonight, Sutter Health confirming to ABC 10 they treated five people from the shooting. All have since been released from the hospital. UC Davis Health is treating four patients from the shooting. Can you believe this? It is like a war zone. And tonight, police confirm an urgent manhunt is underway to find multiple suspects in that mass shooting that happened blocks away from the state capitol. The scale of violence that just happened in our city is unprecedented during my 27 years here at the Sacramento Police Department. Just after 2 in the morning, chaos on the street, shots fired near a row of nightclubs on the busy 10th and K Street. All, all, all we heard was just gunshots, at least automatic gun. Um, after that, we heard gunshots fired back. Officers in the area racing toward the sounds of gunshots, finding a large crowd and providing medical aid. He fell down here said he's bleeding profusely. Police tell me they recovered a stolen gun at the scene and it is now part of multiple pieces of evidence being processed as officials search for answers to end this gun violence. 
what can we do different? What can we do better to not ensure this will never happen again, because that's impossible, but to do everything we can to minimize the chance that we will stand here like this. Again, a night out taking a deadly turn, claiming at least six lives and wounding 12 other people. At 2.30 this morning, I got the call that no elected official wants to get. And you'll have to excuse me for being emotional because I haven't really slept since. A call that I've gotten too many times in the 15 months that I've been in office, that there had been another incident of gun violence in my district, that more people had been killed. So I'm heartbroken and I'm outraged. And so take a look. If you have any information or video that can help Sacramento police, scan that QR code right there on your screen. That will take you to the SAC PD Community Evidence Portal. Any information you, you have could help in this case. Tonight, President Biden is reacting to the mass shooting. In a statement sent by the White House, the president addresses gun violence. The president saying in part, we must do more than mourn. We must act. He goes on to say, quote, we also continue to call on Congress to act. Ban ghost guns, require background checks for all gun sales, ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines. He also mentions to repeal gun manufacturers immunity from liability. Meanwhile, here in California, we spoke with Attorney General Rob Bonza today about this mass shooting. He said he is filled with frustration and anger that something like this is happening again. Uh, this gun epidemic is unique to us in the whole world, and it's America's unique disease. And um, frustration and, and anger about the fact that uh, the federal government hasn't done more uh, uh, to keep communities throughout the nation safer from gun violence and that uh, neighboring states uh, have failed to do, in my view, what is necessary to uh, address this challenge. Governor Newsom also shared similar sentiments and addressed issues of gun violence today. He said this is a crisis in our country. In his statement, he went on to say, quote, sadly, we once again mourn the lives lost and for those injured in yet another horrendous act of gun violence. Jennifer and I sent our heartfelt condolences to the family, friends and to the wider community impacted by this terrible tragedy.